Self-made billionaires, how intriguing. Today we'll learn about Saudi billionaire Prince Al-Walid bin Talal. In addition to being a billionaire, he's a businessman, investor, philanthropist, and royal. In 2008, he was included in Time Magazine's annual list of the 100 most influential persons in the world, known as the Times 100. Al-Walid is the founder, CEO, and 95% owner of the Kingdom Holding Company, which invests in financial services, tourism and hospitality, mass media, entertainment, retail, agriculture, photochemicals, aviation, technology, and real estate. The company had a market capitalization of more than $18 billion in 2013. He's a minor shareholder in Zavarawala Holdings LLC, which owns the Four Seasons Hotel, George V in Paris, as well as a portion of the Plaza Hotel. Time Magazine dubbed him the Arabian Warren Buffett. Al-Walid was named the seventh richest man in the world by Forbes in November 2017 with a net worth of $39.8 billion. Al-Walid bin Talal was born on March 7, 1955 in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia to Prince Talal bin Abdulaziz and Mona El Sol. During the early 1960s, his father was Saudi Arabia's finance minister before going into exile due to his advocacy for political reform. Al-Walid started his business career after graduating from Menlo College in 1979. He returned to Saudi Arabia, which was in the midst of an oil boom from 1974 to 1985. In 1980, Al-Walid founded Kingdom Establishment from a small forum cabin in Riyadh in $30,000 in startup funds provided by his father. When that money ran out, he secured a $300,000 loan from the Saudi American Bank, which is partly owned by Citibank. Al-Walid insisted on a stake in the project rather than taking a commission for facilitating contracts as the legally required middleman. His first success came in 1982 when he partnered with a South Korean construction company and his commissions were used to fund his real estate deals from then on. All the money I used to get from this construction, I used to plow back into real estate and the stock market both, he says. After the Saudi oil boom ended, Al-Walid purchased the underperforming United Saudi Commercial Bank or USCB. By 1989, his net worth had risen to $1.4 billion, with holdings in Cannery Wharf, Four Seasons Hotel Group, and Use Corporation. When Al-Walid expanded into the international market, he concentrated on established brands going through hard times, as Riz Khan puts it. Al-Walid would do his research and then wait for the right time to make a purchase. He made approximately $250 million in investment in Chase Manhattan, Citigroup, Manufacturers Hanover, and Chemical Bank. After seven months, he sold his holdings in the other banks and focused on Citicor, acquiring 4.9% of the bank. Despite being the worst performing bank of the four, Al-Wali thought Citicor had the most potential. Citibank was undercapitalized in September 1990 as a result of real estate credit losses and exposure to Latin American debt, necessitating the establishment of a capital reserve. By November, they were actively looking for investors. Based on his banking experience in the kingdom, Al-Walid agreed to invest $590 million, or roughly half of his accumulated wealth, in a five-year convertible security paying 11% interest in January 1991. By February, his total investment in Citicor had risen to $797 million, or roughly 15% of the company. Despite receiving a temporary waiver from the Federal Reserve to own such a large portion of the company, Al-Walid sold enough shares in 1993 to fall below the 10% threshold. Nonetheless, he was the largest shareholder in the largest financial institution in the United States at the time. Nonetheless, in Al-Walid's words, it is an alliance, not a relationship. We'll always be there for them. I think what he did really saved the bank, Sandy Whale says of Al-Walid. Al-Walid paid $100 million for a 10% stake in Saks Fifth Avenue in 1993, and then in Riyadh, a flagship store was opened. Al-Walid acquired a 50% controlling stake in Fairmont and a 22% stake in Four Seasons in 1994. He purchased a 42% stake in the Plaza Hotel in 1995. And then in 1996, he paid $185 million for the George V and spent $120 million renovating it for a reopening in December 1999. Al-Walid purchased a 27% stake in Moven Pick Hotels and Resorts in October 1997 which he increased to 33% in 2003. The Economist questioned his income source in 1999, wondering if he was a frontman for other Saudi investors. He has not earned enough income from his investments to cover all of his expenditures in the 1990s. The mystery stems from that first investment in Citicor. 
The prince has stated that all of this money came from his personal funds. He claims he began in 1979 with a $30,000 loan from his father. He also mortgaged a house given to him by his father, raising approximately $400,000. And as Ibn Saud's grandson, he receives $15,000 per month. Such sums would barely be enough to clothe a Saudi prince, let alone provide him with a multi-billion dollar empire. Nevertheless, in 1991, Prince Al-Walid felt comfortable risking $797 million in Citicorp. Al-Walid invested nearly $2 billion in Worldcom, Priceline.com, Coca-Cola, and Ford Motor Company. In Asia, he paid $50 million for 5.9% of Daewoo, which he increased to 18% with an additional $100 million investment. $46 million for 3% of Proton Holdings, 3% of Ong Bang Sang's Hotel Properties Limited, and $50 million for Hyundai Motor Company bonds. He invested $50 million in Africa, acquiring 10% of Sonatel, 10% of Echo Bank, 13.7% of United Bank for Africa, and 14% of CalBank. Aside from Planet Hollywood and Euro Disney, poor investments included Worldcom, Priceline, Teledesic, and Kerch Media. In 2005, he sold his stake in Apple. Al Walid also made investments in Eastman Kodak and TWA, both of which did well. Al Walid established Kingdom Hotel Investments in 2002 to manage his hotel assets. By 2003, Al Walid controlled 100% of Rotana and 49% of LBC Sat. His real estate holdings included large stakes in the Four Seasons Hotels and Resorts and the Plaza Hotel in New York. Al Walid sold half of his Plaza shares in August 2004. He owns the Savoy Hotel in London and the Monte Carlo Grand Hotel in Monaco. Al Walid owns 10% of Euro Disney SEA, the company that owns, manages, and maintains Disneyland Paris in Marne La Vallée. Al Walid was ranked fourth on Forbes' 2004 list of the wealthiest people with a net worth of $21.5 billion. Hotel holdings totaled more than $1.3 billion. Al Walid invested $300 million in Twitter in December 2011 purchasing secondary shares from insiders. Kingdom Holding now owns more than 3% of the company, which was valued at $8 billion in late summer 2011. He announced in 2015 that he would donate his fortune to charity at an unspecified time. He had previously donated $3.5 billion through his charitable organization, Al Walid Philanthropies, over the course of 35 years. From 2015 to 2021, he lost several lawsuits against LBCI CEO Pierre Eldar and would be forced to pay $22 million in damages due to breaches in contract conditions with the Lebanese broadcaster. In May 2022, he was listed as committing to purchase approximately 35 million shares of Twitter Inc. at or immediately prior to Elon Musk's and other private equity investors' purchase of Twitter. With that, we come to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching. Do let us know your thoughts on this video in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, then do like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more such exciting content. See you in the next one!